and then when you're done, just flip it over. Okay. So, real quick, I miss the word. This one. Prostrated. Prostrated, yeah. Yep. I cannot remember that. That's okay. Do the best you can.
Good morning, everyone. On behalf of our pastor, Father James Mannion, our associate pastor, Father Bob Scheckenbach, Father Fitzgerald, our faith formation director, Louise DiCarlo, and our administrative assistant, Joan Marie Zipman, a warm welcome to our confirmandi, family, and friends to the parish of St. James as we celebrate the sacrament of confirmation. Today, we also celebrate the Feast of All Saints. Just a few reminders before we begin. Please be sure to turn off all cell phones. For everyone's safety, you must wear a mask covering both your mouth and nose at all times. Those who are not wearing their masks properly will be asked by our ushers to leave the assembly. Please remember to remain six feet apart in the pews and when walking in the aisles. When receiving communion, please open both hands with arms extended so that the host may be gently dropped into your hand to avoid direct contact. Thank you for your cooperation. We will begin shortly. Once again, a warm welcome to our confirmandi, family, and friends to the Sacrament of Confirmation. Presiding is Father Bob. Please rise as we begin our celebration. Praise 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We gather here this morning to pray together so that our prayer with each other can nourish us and nourish our faith. That's always the proclamation I make when we pray together for our Sabbath, to remind us that we're not here to pray by ourselves and we happen to just be in the same building, but there's something very specific for us as Catholic Christians about praying with each other on the Sabbath. It, it nourishes us. It's the way, one of the ways, that God builds us into himself, into his body. And we celebrate today as well this Feast of All Saints and, of course, the Sacrament of Confirmation, the, the conferral of the Holy Spirit, the completion of your initiation into the church. And that's a piece that should probably not be lost. This isn't the end of something. This is actually the beginning. Our initiation process is a process, and it's in stages. This is the last stage of the initiation. So you're starting your membership today, not finishing it. You're beginning your membership in this body today. And what is linked to that is this empowerment by, by God and, and the celebration of that inside of us. And we celebrate people in the feast today that have done that. We don't, we don't just invite spirits to come. We celebrate our champions today who have names and faces and histories and stories. People who have been imbued with God's life and breath and have lived that out. And that's our hope for all of you today being confirmed. So we begin as we always do by recalling this great capacity we have for God and always recognizing at the beginning of this prayer that there are things that get in the way and we ask God to remove them. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us now together reflect on the mystery of our God as we give glory and praise to our God. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, O God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. For you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Grant God that the Holy Spirit being given to us and dwelling graciously within us may make these confirmande and all of us here perfect homes and temples of your life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our Liturgy of the Word. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given the power to damage the sea and the land. Do not damage the sea or the land or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal. One hundred and forty-four thousand marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of great multitude, 
which no one could count. From every nation, race, people, and tongue, they stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne, and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves in the, before the throne, worshipped God, and explained, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, these are the ones who have survived the times of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure, as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. After he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we have the sacrament of confirmation, the conferral of God's Spirit, of the Holy Spirit. We have the feast of all saints and everything that that means. We have the reality of being children of God is a big part of the theme for this feast. And not least of all, we have this section from the Gospel of Matthew, which is referred to as the Beatitudes. Now during the week, I've spent some time on and off trying to reflect on all of that and see if there was a connection. Surely, surely a sign that I need to get out more, if nothing else. But I did. I put some time in. And, and there really is. And I, and I didn't have to stretch it. I, I can pretty much connect all of them by asking those to be confirmed one simple question. And it's really a question we should all ask ourselves, regardless of how old we are. But in terms of, of beginning your, your membership into our faith and into our church and into our parish, I'm going to ask this one question, and it really does sum up everything that's going on here today. What kind of person do you want to be? What kind of person do you want to be? Who are you and who do you want to be? And that pretty much sums up everything that I had just pointed out as a part of today. And I have to explain part of that. Because we tend to think of people we call saints as people who are perfect. They're not. Holiness and perfection have nothing to do with one another. Let that sink in for a minute, especially you older folks, people with hair the color of mine. Holiness and perfection have nothing to do with one another. Holiness is not about behavior. Holiness is not about morality. Holiness isn't a lifestyle. Holiness is the revelation of God. It's the sacred. It's, it's the mystery we, we try to live in, and sometimes we encounter it. It's that part of God that we call divinity that, that God made a part of us. So when we call somebody a saint, it's, it's not a statement about their behavior or that they were good. Some of them weren't good in the traditional sense. Some of them were actually crazy, too. Read some of the saints' lives. Perfection is the last thing you're going to pick up. Some of them had some pretty wacky stories. And yet, we call them holy because they became conduits for God. They became the way in which God could be revealed to people. Who do you want to be? What kind of person do you want to be? 
That's not only what this feast is about today, all saints. It's what confirmation's about. I could tell you all about the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. I could tell you all about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There's seven of them, by the way. Write that on your hand in case anybody quizzes you later. Seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I could tell you all about the history of the development of the concept of the Holy Spirit. What's significant is simply the fact that all of that, the development of the doctrine, everything that we say about the Holy Spirit, the beautiful chapters that you can read in different books about it, they're all ways of us trying to describe or articulate the fact that God wants to be a part of us. And I don't mean as a spectator. The Holy Spirit is simply two words. That, that tries to define the fact that God wants to be inti intimately involved in our being. Wants to be, if they had this language, they would have used it. Wants to be in our DNA. Wants to be part of our, our blood, part of our bodies. We're talking about a God that chooses to become human. We're talking about a God who, while human, sums up his whole presence with food. And that's not just me being obsessed with food. That's a part of it. There's a saying, you are what you eat. That is not lost on the early Christians and on Jesus himself, who equated the simple meal of bread, unleavened bread, bread that doesn't even rise, the simple meal of bread, and there would have been herbs and maybe some dried fish. They equate that with God wanting to be a part of us. You are what you eat. God's presence becomes a part of our bodies. That's what we're dealing with here. So when we talk about the Holy Spirit, it's just simply another way to try to describe God's desire to be involved, to be physically involved in you. Here's the thing, however, it's never going to be against your will. Ever. So if you don't want it to happen, it never will. God will step aside. Never be against my will, never be against your will. That's where these so-called beatitudes come in. And the translation really isn't that great. It says, blessed are the poor, blessed are they who mourn, blessed are the meek. It really goes more like this. Oh, may the blessedness be on the poor. Oh, may the blessedness be on, or the blessed, oh, the blessedness is upon the poor. The blessedness is upon the mourning. The blessedness is upon the meek, the merciful, the peacemakers. See, it's not a reward and punishment, these beatitudes. It's not, oh, I behave this way and I get rewarded. It's about openness. It's about openness because it'll never be against your will. Being a conduit for God's presence, being a conduit for the holy becoming holy will never be against your will. The more open we are to it, the more it happens. We don't have to make it happen. We don't have to earn it. It's like the love that you receive from your parents. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to deserve it. You don't have to be worthy of it. Doesn't mean they're not disappointed sometimes. Doesn't mean they don't have to draw lines. But their love is unconditional. There's no conditions to it. You don't have to make it happen. Babies don't have to make their parents love them. If they did, it would be a pretty horrible world. And, and that's exactly what these Beatitudes are getting at. That, that we will be as filled with this spirit, we will be as filled with this presence of God to the extent that we can be open to allowing it to come through us. I'm blessed, not because I did this and I'm receiving a ward and the, re the, the blessedness is my reward. I'm blessed because I've opened myself up to it. So I'm going to be consoled to the extent that I can console people. If I can console you, then I'm going to be open to being consoled. It's, the, it's that reciprocal 
sense of God that we hear every time we pray the Lord's Prayer. Every time we pray the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. I will be as forgivable as I am able to forgive. So if I can't forgive you, I'm not going to let myself be forgiven. And more importantly, if I don't let myself be forgiven, there's no way I'm ever forgiving you. I will be as forgivable as I am able to forgive, and I will be as able to forgive as, as much as I am forgivable. And that's the same with each one of these Beatitudes. It's an openness, because God's Spirit is free and unconditional. God's life is free and unconditional. God's presence is free and unconditional. Now here's another thing uh, about the Holy Spirit. As I said, has nothing to do with behavior. Holiness has nothing to do with behavior. It's becoming a conduit for the sacred. Holy Spirit's a bad translation. We have a disadvantage to the ancient Greek. They have a lot of words that we don't have good translations for. So the original word is, is, is from the Hebrew, and it means breath. It's ruha, and they, say, they make the breath noise when they say it, ruha. It's breath. When you go to the book of Genesis and read about the creation of humans, that's what God breathes in them, his breath, the breath of God. That gets translated into the Greek as pneuma, which means spirit, but still this sense of living breath. And then it gets translated really poorly into English as ghost. Remember that? Folks with my color hair and people with no hair? Ghost. Holy ghost. Oof. What a horrible translation. And almost as bad, spirit. Not a good translation. What it's trying to get at is, is that concept of breath. Breath goes inside of you. Someone breathes in you, you have their breath in you. Again, another way of, of trying to articulate God's desire to, to be a part of our being. What kind of person do you want to be? Now, I have a really silly example I'm going to use, but stay with me because it does make the point. So what if I told you right here, right now, in real time, that, that I was a bodybuilder? Thank you for not laughing. Maybe you're thinking, well, you don't know under all that stuff. Maybe, you know, maybe he's not round. I'm round, just so you know. What if I told you I was a bodybuilder? You might be kind and say, okay, I'll, 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 I'll play. <laughs> Oh, really? That's great. So what gym do you go to? Oh, I, I don't go to a gym. Oh, so like what? You, you must have like weights and machines in your garage. M no, no, I, well, I got some stuff out there, but I never go in the garage. Well, you have like this phenomenal nutrition plan probably. Mm, no, nah, no, nah, not really. I eat mostly donuts. And then this goes on for a while, the poor person is eventually going to wonder what my problem is identifying myself as a bodybuilder. Because nothing that would make that true seems to be the case. None of the resources that I would use to become a bodybuilder seem to be in play here. What kind of person do you want to be? And then what are the resources that you're going to use? If I ask, if, if you say to me, you're a good person. Now, if I ask you some questions, am I going to be able to ascertain that you're using some resources to become that? Or am I going to be in the same dilemma that the poor guy was that asked me about me being a bodybuilder and finally gives up and goes, oh, the poor guy. When you identify yourself as even a Christian, or I'm Catholic, 
Am I going to hear resources that you're using to become that, to be that? See, and that's the thing. All of this that I'm saying about God coming through us, of us being a conduit for the sacred, for the holy, for the spirit, we have to choose it. And there's resources to make that happen. The obvious one is, is belonging to our church. There's, there's thousands and thousands of forms of prayer and meditation that our religion alone has. Am I going to be a person of prayer that helps me to be that person that I want to be? Because if you want to be a conduit for the Spirit that's being given to you today ritually, if you want to be that, our faith community, for all its faults and all its horrors, our faith community has every resource you need to be that. And I'm going to end with this because I want this to be what you remember, if nothing else. Everything I'm saying is an extremely radical and profound concept of God. What do I mean by that? I mean, I am proclaiming a God that not only cares about you and loves you, which we've all heard, nothing big about that. I'm proclaiming a God that actually cares about the kind of person you become. Also not a big deal. We kind of buy that. I'm proclaiming a God that not only cares about the person you become, but wants to be directly involved in that and is going to give you the power to be that. That's confirmation. Now, it could end up being this nice ceremony at the end. Nothing wrong with that. It's a great day. It's a great prayer. It's great to have you here. But we are proclaiming a radical radical proclamation that, that our creator, the creator of the universe, actually wants to be involved in you becoming the person that you want to be. And when you get that oil on your head today, as much as you're all nervous and you don't know what to say and everyone goes, oh, amen, peace, blah, 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 you know, at the wrong time and I'm getting a card stuck in my face and uh, it's all good. But remember, that oil, and you're going to smell it, that's not an accident. That oil is supposed to be the reminder, the outward sign that, that God wants to be in you and God wants to be a part of you figuring out the person that you want to be. What kind of person do you want to be? Who, who are you and who are you going to become? And, and how willing are you to allow God to be a part of that? I invite you to please stand so that together we can offer our prayers and petitions in our prayer of the faithful. No? Okay. I am going to invite everyone except those to be confirmed to be seated, so our confirmande please remain standing. And I did forget that this part comes before our universal prayer, so I apologize for that. I'm standing at the font because this becomes the, again, outward sign, that's the term we use for sacraments. Of, of the new life that we receive in baptism. Some of you might have very well even been baptized right here. Um, and if not, some font that was this sign of new life that we receive from God when we're created 
and the new life that we're celebrating as members of our church. That's where the initiation process started. So the sacraments of initiation are baptism, confirmation, and the Eucharist. Again, stages and a process. So today is where this, this process of the initiation ritual ends, but your membership begins. So at this font, it fell to your sponsors and your parents particularly to promise things about our beliefs. And where we're not dense, we don't think that babies are making some kind of baby profession. I've heard Catholics actually say that to me. That, that someone that's not Catholic in another tradition will say, why do you Catholics baptize babies? They can't make any promise about the faith or any promise about our beliefs. Why would you do that? And, and somebody well-meaning that's a Catholic will say, oh, well, the, the baby makes this cosmic baby profession of, oh, nonsense. Baby's not doing anything except eating and making you clean their diapers and things. That's what they do. That's what babies do. The promise is the parents. We do it at the beginning of life so there's more time to be exposed to members of the faith. That's the point. And the parents are making the promises for them on their behalf as well as at least one sponsor who is sponsoring the new member in. And you have a sponsor today who's doing the same thing. And I always point out at those baptisms that there'll be a time where you might be able to make some of those promises yourself. More likely than not, it might not be until you drag your own baby for a baptism that somebody told you you have to have. And you start figuring, well, what do I actually believe? And maybe I can say yes to these promises. But for some, maybe it comes earlier, maybe now. Maybe there's a couple of things I'm going to ask that you can say, yeah, I, I can say yes to that. This is the beginning of your membership where you can come closer and closer to making these proclamations and these promises about what we believe. And I'm going to ask you um, to renew your baptism promises. And the answer is, I do. So you write that on your hand. And, and I want you to really hear it. You know, use your outside voice, right? You don't have to do church voice. Use your like, yelling in the outside voice. And, and I want you to listen to the questions. I want you to listen to how simple they are. And then I want you to notice at the end. So it goes, it's really quick because they're, they're short and simple. The end of it is me simply saying, this is our faith. That's it. This is our faith. This is the faith of our church. We're proud to profess it through Christ our Lord. Amen. This is our faith. Now, you would think that anything that ended with this is our faith would be like 10 books of stuff, right? Pages and pages of stuff you have to know. Your, your whole career in religious education. Pages and pages and pages and pages. And then we say, this is our faith. Well, listen to this. And if you do, please say, I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus the Christ, his Son, our Lord and brother, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, was buried, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today through this sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body to life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of our church. We're proud to profess it through Christ our Lord. Amen. This oil is called sacred chrism. It's used twice in the life of the church. Once is for baptism slash confirmation. Why the slash? Because you already had this put on you. Technically, and, and don't tell anybody, keep it a secret, but technically you were already confirmed when you were a baby. 
and it broke away throughout the centuries, and we use the same oil. It's only used one other time in the church, and that is to ordain ministers. So it's for initiation and ordination. That's not a coincidence. When people ask me, when did I become a priest? I tell them, 1961. And they go, ooh. And then they start doing math on their fingers. And they go, wow, you look great. <laughs> well, thanks. I was baptized in 1961. That's when my priesthood started. That's when your priesthood starts. That's when we're empowered to live out what happens to us in this font. This is God's power to be the person you want to be. Now, when did I find out or decide that I wanted to make a living out of it? That was 1989, where this same exact oil was put on my hands. And I can still smell it and go back to that day. That's the point of the fragrance, to engage us. So I'm going to bring this oil over for us to use for the actual sacrament of confirmation, the conferral of the God's Spirit. And what goes along with the um, what goes along with the anointing of the oil is is a laying on of hands, which we're not going to actually do a laying on of hands. And and this was not because of the virus. We we've always just kind of raised our hands as a sign of the laying on of hands. So with the the conferral of this of the Holy Spirit. It's, it was a laying on of hands and then the anointing. And in the early church, they would have anointed the people from head to toe with the oil. You're just going to have some on your head. Don't get scared. My friends, we pray to God, our Creator and our Father, for these adopted sons and daughters, already born again to new life and baptism, that God will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with the gifts of the Spirit through this anointing, may they conform more fully to Jesus, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus, who brought these servants to new birth by water and Spirit, freeing them, making them your sons and daughters, send upon them, Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Give them the spirit of counsel and fortitude. Give them the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of awe in the Lord. Through Christ our Lord, amen. I'm going to invite you to follow the instructions of our catechists and come forward as, as prompted to be confirmed. Rose, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. John, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Catherine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Avery, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Esther, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Catherine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thanks. Ray.
grace be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Elizabeth, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Alfonso, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Lydia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Grace, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Anne, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Diana, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Patrick, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Anne, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Hope, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Laura, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Marie, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. <laughs> Thanks. Theodora, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Cecilia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Robert, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Good choice on the name, too. Patricia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Thank you. Please stand. And now we will present our prayers and petitions in our prayer of the faithful.
My brothers and sisters, we humbly pray to God, our Creator, and our Father, to be of one mind in our prayer today, just as faith, hope, and love, which proceed from God's Spirit, are one. Our response will be, Lord, receive our prayer. For all members of our church, that we may have knowledge to choose only what is right and to be faithful in our journey of salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. For the newly confirmed, that the gifts of the Holy Spirit will continue to develop in their lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord receive our, our prayer. For their parents and sponsors, that the Holy Spirit will become a renewed source of support for them. Just as they have been a source of support for the candidates, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. For our community, that the Holy Spirit may refresh us through the inspiration provided by our candidates, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. For all people everywhere, that they may experience the peace and joy of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. For our deceased family, friends, neighbors, and mentors who handed on their faith to us, that they enjoy the fullness of their inheritance with Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. O God, who gave your Holy Spirit to the apostles and willed that that same Spirit be handed on today to our confirmandi, grant that your grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now be spread through the hearts of all who believe in you. We ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare for our Liturgy of the Eucharist. Make me a channel of your peace Where there is hatred, let me bring your love Where there is injury or pardon, Lord And where there's doubt, true faith in you Make me a channel of your peace Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope Where there is darkness, only light And where there's sadness, ever Master, grant that I may never seek So much to be consoled as to console To be understood as to understand To be loved as to love with all my soul channel of your peace it is in pardoning that we are pardoned in giving of ourselves that we receive and in dying that, that we're born, born to, to eternal, eternal love, love. Please stand, pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, Lord, the prayers of us, your servants, and grant that being conformed to your Son, these Confirmandi may grow steadily in bearing witness to him, 
as they share in the memorial of his life and his redemption, by which he has given them your Holy Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you bestow gifts suited to every season and guide the governing of your church, your body, in wonderful ways. By the power of your Holy Spirit, you come unfailingly to our aid, so that with a heart always open to you, we may never fail to seek your help in time of trouble, nor cease to give you thanks and praise in time of joy. And so in the company of your holy ones, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Please kneel. You are indeed holy and to be glorified God. You who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he breaks open the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of his last supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal mystery of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted both now and forever as members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, God, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, 
Confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to a dwelling place with you forever in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, and with all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. In the first two words of the Lord's Prayer, we're not always only calling God a loving parent, a father, a mother, but that implies that we are related. We're brothers and sisters. That's a, as, as much as important a statement as saying our father is that we're family. And even when we pray this alone, we don't say my father, it's always our father. And that's the relationship that your initiation births you into. That's what began at baptism and is completed today, the, the initiation into this family, into this relationship that is like family. So we pray together now the words that Jesus, our brother, gave us, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand and let us pray. Accompany with your guidance, direction, and your blessing from this day forward, Lord, those here today with us who have been anointed with your Holy Spirit and nourished by the life of your Son in this Eucharist, so that with all trials overcome, they may gladden your church by their holiness, and through their works and their loving service, foster our growth in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just one brief order of business. There are baskets along the uh, window sills all throughout the church. That's what we've been using uh, to, to collect our, our collection uh, during the, uh, the virus and the pandemic. Um, so this actually technically is a Sunday liturgy. Um, so, so if you can, give whatever you can and use those baskets uh, along the uh, windows of the church. Um, and also, more importantly, uh, like would like to end uh, just by congratulating our, our newly confirmed and, and welcome to this part of your membership in the church. And um, may all of our concern and love for you go with you and, and hold on to that, that promise that, that God will, will guide you and direct you. All you have to do is let him. So congratulations.
The Lord be with you. Thank you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Today.